Okay, let's talk about um, the convergence uh, of Newton's method. So Newton's method has got some problems with it, right? Like we've seen some examples uh, where it can break down, where it doesn't work. But I want to convince you uh, that Newton's method is actually quite a good method and it's worth knowing about because it is actually quite efficient um, when it works. Um, so it's worth um, the fact that you know, sometimes it can break and you might need to try a new starting, um, a new starting guess. So we are going to need a little bit of math here, um, uh, a little bit of math about Taylor series, you know, because um, uh, Newton's method uh, is all based around a Taylor series approximation. To actually prove anything about Newton's method, uh, we need the theories, the, the theorems uh, about, Taylor's, uh, about Taylor series. So you may or may not remember Lagrange's remainder theorem uh, about Taylor series. If not, then that's okay. Basically, it says that, you know, I had, when I wrote up uh, my Taylor series approximation before I put an approximate term here, I said f of x is approximately equal to this polynomial that I wrote down. Um, and you can make that polynomial, uh, you can make that uh, uh, polynomial uh, be exactly equal to your function uh, by going from a polynomial to a series, right? So you can make it exact by adding on more and more and more terms or by adding on essentially this fudge factor here at the end. So if you want to take a finite sum of terms uh, up here, then, you know, you want to stop at some, uh, your polynomial approximation um, uh, at some number of terms n, uh, then it turns out uh, that the error, oh, sorry, here it is, here's my error term. Now, if you stop at the nth term here, the n minus one term, uh, and how it's written here, uh, then the error you can shove into um, kind of a fudge factor here, right? Why is it a fudge factor? Um, it's a fudge factor because there's this mysterious number z uh, that appears um, in, the, uh, in the error term here. And, you know, uh, z is just a number that's between a, that where I center my approximation at, uh, and x. So, you know, I don't know what z is. I don't know exactly what this error term is. I don't know, um, but, you know, formally, uh, this is how we can write down uh, the error or the remainder uh, in a Taylor series. Um, and so, you know, it makes this uh, polynomial thing uh, an exact, sort of formally. So, we can use this uh, to go and derive um, some things about our, uh, about our Taylor series. So there's my, um, there's the expression that I had up before. Let's just make this uh, look like, let's make that exact. And the way that I'm going to make this exact uh, is by shoving in this fudge factor, this error term. Okay, with a cubic term, uh, and z is, I'll write it like this, uh, z is between a and x, right? If x is to the left of a, um, then that's, uh, that's not right. Um, but, um, you know, this would need to flip around. Uh, but you can know what I mean uh, about that. Okay, so the other thing that I had, so let's just put that in a box, and we'll refer back to that later. And then let's start... Uh, writing down some stuff uh, about Newton's method. So let's write down Newton's method first. So Newton's method is xk plus 1 uh, equals xk take away f prime of xk over f double prime of xk, like that. Now, for reasons that will become clear later, uh, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to, well, uh, shove in the true minimizer here. All right, so I'm going to um, subtract off from both sides uh, so this value x star. Um, yeah, and that's just going to be something that I'll come back to, I'm going to come back to later. So let's even call that equation star because I'll use that uh, in a bit. Uh, now, I can write down this thing. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down this expression uh, and I'm going to differentiate it. So in fact, um, uh, I'm going to do I'm going to differentiate it um, straight here, straight away here. So this expression, uh, exactly as it is, uh, let's write this down and differentiate it with respect to x. So f prime of x, looking back up to here, uh, f of x k, right? So uh, my function evaluated at some value of x. That is a number. 
right? So that, uh, the derivative of that number with respect to x is 0. Um, so that term disappears. Uh, this term, you remember I'm differentiating the x's. x, k is are all numbers. So this is going to leave me uh, with an f prime of x, k when I differentiate that. That times that is a number, so it disappears. So I'm just left with 1 times that. Uh, and similarly with this, you know, uh, pull down the 2. That cancels out there. Uh, and that's going to leave me with f double prime of this, uh, of x, k, uh, times this thing. And then I've got my cubic term. Uh, so that's going to differentiate uh, similarly. So the 3 is going to cancel uh, with the 3 factorial and leave me with 2 factorial. So I'll just write that as 2. x minus xk all squared. OK, so that's the derivative uh, of my Taylor series approximation. Fine. Now just bear with me. Keep bearing with me. Um, and let me plug in f prime of x star. All right. So the gradient uh, of this function evaluated at the minimizer, uh, what's the gradient of this function uh, evaluated at its minimum? It has to be 0, because right? the whole point of a minimum is that it's a stationary point. Um, so at that uh, value x star, Right, the slope of the function has got to be equal to zero. Cool. And let's just plug in on the right hand side. Okay, so I've made some I've made some progress there. Um, I can now, so knowing this uh, uh, horrible expression here is equal to 0, I can make f prime of x k the subject. So let's pull everything else over onto the other side, and we'll just write this like this. That's a 2. My z's always have a little bar going through them because I draw them such that they look very, very similar to twos, and that has to be as a negative. Uh, okay, so now the whole point of this, so I've done a whole bunch of um, magic there, which um, is not really clear uh, why I was doing any of that. So the big reveal. Um, is I wanted to get a, an expression for this f prime of xk so that I could plug into this equation here. And then a lot of things are going to simplify, um, you're going to see. And I'm going to be left with something that's uh, nice and interpretable. So let's plug this into equation star. Right, so I've got an f prime of xk up there. So xk plus 1 take away x star is going to be equal to xk minus x star, uh, subtract f prime of x, which is this object here. So I divide everything here by f double prime uh, xk, right? Uh, so divide that term by f double prime xk and that term by f double prime xk, uh, and we've got it. So the negatives cancel out, right? So actually that cancels with that. The negatives turn into pluses. So there I'm going to get just x star take away xk. Just get that term. Everything else cancels. And then I'm going to be left with something here. Uh, I'm going to be left with all of that divided by f double prime of xk. So let's write this as a half f triple prime of z over f double prime of xk times blah, blah, blah. And that was lovely, so those things disappear. And actually now I'm just left with a half f triple prime of z, f double prime of xk. Cool. 
So, if we start to look at this, then we've got something, uh, we're starting to get something that's, um, that's useful here. Um, you know, these, it was no accident that I was trying to force into everything uh, x star minus xk, um, or x star minus xk plus 1, uh, and x star uh, minus xk. Because these are essentially the lengths of my intervals, right? So the, you know, thinking back to the, um, uh, the golden search uh, methods, you know, these are sort of the, my error, right? My difference between my, my current guess at the solution and the true solution, you know, that's my error term, or it's kind of related to, you know, it's, it's, it's essentially the width of my interval divided by half in the way I was doing it with the golden search. So what I can say now is I can start to look at the magnitude of that error. Right? So I can take absolute values of both sides. Right? If I try to take uh, absolute values of both sides, well, I get the absolute value of the product of these things, uh, which is going to be... Put an absolute value about that. I don't need it on the half. Uh, and then x star, uh, maybe I'll even write this the other way around as I put an x, because I put an absolute value in now, times that squared. And now, you know, the important thing to say about this is I've been ignoring this ugly term and just lumping it all together, but the only thing that I need to, uh, to know about this term, you know, I don't know anything about what uh, z is, um, so I can't say anything about this term, but I can say that it's bounded. Right? Um, because of what f is, because um, f has got these, um, uh, uh, because uh, uh, f has, has got its uh, first uh, couple of derivatives, because it's sort of sufficiently smooth, because these derivatives exist, I can say that this is bounded, so this doesn't go off towards infinity, so I can say that that's less than or equal to some bound k. And so I can say this. So the error in my next step uh, of, the, uh, of this method uh, is bounded uh, by the square of the error in the previous, uh, in the previous step uh, of this thing. So in other words, the length of the k plus 1's interval you know, is less than or equal to k on 2 uh, times uh, the length of the previous interval squared. And we call that um, quadratic convergence. Convergence, if I spell it correctly. All right. So you know the fact it's quadratic because there's a squared here, uh, essentially. So these intervals are getting smaller and smaller and smaller uh, at a sort of quadratic rate. Now you can compare that with something like the golden. Um, golden section search, right? So, which is previously our best method here. In the golden section search, the width of the next interval uh, in the algorithm, uh, well, it's exactly equal to here. You know, it's gamma, this golden, um, this golden ratio, times the width of the previous interval. Right, like we designed it to have that property, right? So that it was, you know, a fraction uh, of the width of the previous interval, and that uh, previous interval is like um, uh, a bit over a half. It's like two thirds or something. So you know, notice that there's a squared on one. You know, so we've got a constant uh, and a squared uh, and a constant and a power of one. So this has actually got linear convergence, and that's the big difference between these two things. So the rate at which um, the interval, uh, the search interval is, uh, uh, is getting smaller in Newton's method is quadratic uh, compared to linear for the golden uh, section search. So that actually makes it uh, way, way more efficient. Actually amongst the, um, all of the optimization methods, it's getting pretty good uh, already. And I'll explain, you know, it's so good that it actually gets used in places, um, including places you might not think um, it's also in a sec. Um, so, to sum up, you know, here's what we know about um, Newton's method. Now we have this nice picture, 
uh, where if I have, you know, so if we've drawn it down, uh, we've drawn it as a root finding uh, method here, um, uh, but it, it's the same thing. You know, so long as you choose a starting value that's sort of sufficiently close um, to where the minimum of the function is or where the, um, uh, the root of the uh, uh, the root of the derivative function is, um, then it will converge. And if this is quite steep, then it will converge very quickly uh, towards C. Around here, this should converge um, to A. If I get too far away, if my function looks too, uh, too wacky, uh, then it will diverge. You know, also, the, canonic, the classic thing you will have seen about Newton's method is if you start um, at a stationary point, you know, the, the tangent is flat. Um, and so I won't go anywhere there at all. That's the case where it, um, the whole thing breaks down. But so long as you do a decent first guess, um, then this is a great uh, thing to do. Now, it's such a great thing to do. That quadratic convergence is so good um, that this actually gets used. Like, it's actually really fast um, to find uh, minima of uh, function. And this crops up, actually, in the world um, in places that you wouldn't expect. So, for example, just as just one example of that, and maybe I'll do others uh, as the course goes on. One example of where this pops up uh, is in a funny little algorithm uh, called the fast inverse square root. So, you know, this is a way to take the inverse square root uh, of a number. Um, it does it very quickly, um, and this actually gets used uh, in sort in all sorts of you know this little method here is so useful. Um, it gets used in all sorts of places, including, you know, this picture uh, is from the computer game Quake 3 Arena. Um, and it's useful in computer graphics uh, and in computer games to be able to calculate uh, inverse square roots uh, so that you can uh, map out the 3D space that the characters are in and things like this. So it's a very useful thing. You have to do, be, able to be able to move around inside a 3D space. You have to do this calculation, the inverse square root, trillions of times. You know, uh, many, many times a second. Um, and the way that it works, you should look this up. There are some really interesting little descriptions about how um, they do this. You know, a, a genius thing that got built into uh, Quake 3, uh, into the code, was this impl little, little implementation of Newton's method to, cr to calculate this, um, this square root that's so useful for rendering the graphics um, quickly. So actually, computer graphics and things rely on uh, Newton's method uh, in one particular, um, in one particular um, uh, instance. Really nice little um, example if you go and read this about how Newton's method actually gets used. Um, so yeah, quadratic convergence is great. Um, Newton's method is great. Uh, we'll use it a lot. Um, yeah, keep in mind that it's, um, it's actually a really powerful method. And we'll stop there.